Hey guys, it's Jen. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my September stash kit. I wanted to forewarn you that this video is a bit long, so if you'd rather just see the completed kit, just head over to my blog at craftygenscow.com. Hey guys, it's Jen, and I am back with another stash kit for you. In July, I put together a kit for my stash using both older and newer products, and you guys really liked it, and I had to take a break in August to finish up my class, which is now live on my website, but I am back for um, September, so I wanted to share the kit that I am going to put together with you and go through how I put the kit together just like I did last time, and I'll be sure to link to that those other videos, the playlist that those other videos are on in the description below. So this is the case that I am going to store my kit in. I love this idea. Nicole Jones from Nicole Jones 911 here on YouTube gave me the idea to use these iris containers, and then there's little inserts that you can buy that have divided trays that you can um, put your embellishments in. So I will be putting my kit inside of this and working with it throughout the month of September. So let me just put that aside and I will get started and show you how I'm going to put this kit together. So I have um, some papers that I've chosen and I wanted to show you how I started out. So this was the paper that I absolutely loved that I wanted to use and this is what fueled the kit. So it doesn't have a bunch of colors in it which is sometimes how I start a kit is with one paper that has several colors in it. This is just a paper I absolutely loved and so I knew I wanted to use it. So that's how I'm starting it and usually when I am picking my papers I will choose based on one side only. The other side is just a bonus if I if I end up getting to use it but one side is what I'm picking the paper for. So this is the paper that I started with and from there I just added some of the colors that I know I love to work with. So this was another paper. This is from the same line. So I think sometimes it's nice to choose a couple from a, from a single line and then you can choose a couple from another line or um, just use that as your base and build from there. So this paper incorporates several colors. It has the pink that's in here, a darker pink, and it has kind of this orangey reddish pink as well as some yellow. And so that is going to help me build the rest of my kit. So from there, I knew I wanted to incorporate some of this green or teal. So the next paper that I pulled was this one from Dear Lizzie. And this is from the Fine and Dandy collection. So not her most recent, but, but the one before that I think is what that's from. And when I was pulling for um, kind of teal papers, I chose a few different ones. Let me pull another one that I, another option that I had really quick. This is another option, which I also like. This is a super old paper from Crate Paper. This is from their farmhouse collection. I think this is probably from maybe even as far back as 2010, so maybe about five years old. I actually really like this one, and both sides really work, so I haven't taken it out of the running. When I'm putting together a kit, I'm also looking at pattern. So this is kind of like a paper that I could use for a background. It's a wood grain pattern. It has a little bit of interest to it. This is a pattern that has um, a floral, which I often include, and stripes and polka dots. Those are kind of the, the patterns that I always think about. So a background, a floral, a stripe, and a polka dot. Those are my go-tos. So for now, I'm going to leave both of these in. I might end up switching one or two of them out. Um, in an effort to use up some of my older sassafras paper, I also pulled this paper. And I kind of like it. I'm not sold on it yet. I like that it has all of those colors. So it has the teal, it has the yellow, and it has some of that pink in the bottom of the sky here. I've been holding on to this paper for since 2011 it's been quite a while the back side would maybe work with some of it too but um this is the side i would pull it for so i'm thinking about this paper because i want to pull 10 papers and i'm going to get two backgrounds probably two florals or a floral and then another like kind of bold pattern a couple of stripes and a couple of polka dots so that's kind of where i'm headed and polka dots could mean anything it could mean like a a heart on the background, which is 
why I pulled this these next couple papers let me show you so this was one of them and this was the other and I pulled this one because it pulls in this bright pink and I really actually like the way it looks with those papers right there I pulled this one because it pulls in this orangey red and I like this one because it's cute. It's ombre. It's from 2013 Lily B Design, so this one's a bit older. This one is from Glitz Design, which is no longer, I don't think it's long any longer in business. But this is from a couple years ago as well. So these are both a little bit older. I really like the way that this this one feels with the kit. And so I'm leaning toward this one. Um, the next thing I found was a paper that would kind of help bring it all together, I think, and it's also a specialty paper. So it is this paper from Dear Lizzie Fine and Dandy, which is what this paper is from. So like I said, sometimes pulling one or two from the same kit can help bring things together. This paper I decided to go ahead and go with, which made me decide not to use this paper because it just doesn't fit. It's not the same kind of feel, so I'm gonna get rid of that paper. But when I put this paper in, I really like it. And it pulls in the red and it pulls in the pink. So I think this will help me bring everything together. This paper also works really well with it. So I could, if I wanted to, change my mind about these. So I'm just keeping it to the side to kind of um, decide whether or not I want to do that. So there are a couple other papers I pulled because I thought they were cute and I will show you why they did not did or did not work. This paper I pulled because I know I specifically have some photos where we're riding canoes on a lake and this is a paper that I got recently but it is from an older collection. Let's see, I'm trying to look at the date. 2013. So it's from Wanderlust. Lust from Studio Calico, and I think it matches okay. It doesn't really fit the theme of the kit, but I think I could pull certain things together. The awesome thing about kits is you can get a variety of styles and looks on your layouts based on what you choose for a particular page. So I haven't ruled this one out. I kind of like it. The back doesn't really go for me because it clashes with this, but it could work on its own with other things. So I'm not ruling it out. And this would be one of those papers that's like the floral. It's a bold pattern and um, so I'm keeping that in mind. So I'm going to put it to the side for now, but it is on my radar. Another thing I often like to include is a text print. And I have two and I haven't decided which one I want to go with yet. So there's this one, which is from the Pebble Sunnyside collection, which is from 2012. So that's a little bit older. And I like the way that this one looks. It brings in a little bit of that creamy color, which is fine. And I know that the backs of some of these papers have that cream color going on. Or there's this one, which is from the Pebbles Homegrown collection, which this is a newer collection. This is brand new, 2015. And I like actually like both of them. I like the bigness of this one, and I kind of like that it's blue. It brings in the blue from the dot here. So I am going to go with the bolder text, but this one would just be a matter of preference because they both work. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that one. So the next thing I wanted to do and that I was thinking about was if I really wanted this polka dot paper. The size of it is almost the same size as these hearts. So that is bothering me just a little bit. I found another teal paper that I liked, but it's also a text print. So um, if I were to get rid of this and add in the text, then I have two text prints which isn't horrible, but then that also means that this navy that I pulled the polka dot, I pulled this one because it matched the polka dot in this one, they aren't um, coordinating anymore. And so even though this one is really cute and I really like it, this is from the Chamel collection, and both sides would probably work for some of the layouts, I'm going to go ahead and stick with this older paper with the polka dots. Um, I'm still thinking about the hearts because, like I said, I could always trade for this one, and these are a bit of a different size, so that might work. If I pull it out now and show you what it looks like, looks like that, and then I would want to pull in another red paper. 
So I have another kind of a couple papers that could fit that bill. I have a polka dot, which I'm going to nix right away because I've already got a polka dot and it just feels very similar to me. And then I have this wildflower paper. I'm going to pull this paper out so that we can see exactly how it brings everything together. So this one has that reddish color, but it also fades to this nice pink, which matches some of these tones. So I really like that. Um, if I slide it in here, you can kind of get a feel for how it would look with some of the other papers. I haven't decided yet. It's The look of the kit is getting really varied to me, and um, I don't know if I'm loving that. So if I pull that in, it's either one of these two and I think I'm leaning towards the hearts even though I just took them out so you're just watching my process here with me so sorry if this is obnoxious to you so right now I have seven papers I want to get about ten I I always like to include something that has a great amount of contrast so like a black and white or something like that so I have a couple options for that as well and I pulled these three patterns. So this one is from a crepe paper collection. This is Maggie Holmes. So are these two right here. It's not from the same collection, um, but it it's from the same line. So it would definitely work if I wanted to pull it. The back side's a little busy for me. I don't think I would probably use it, but it's a polka dot and it feels very similar to this polka dot. So again, I'm going to nix that one. The second paper that I pulled was this one from Studio Calico, which is kind of like a grayish color, and it's got these arrows on it, which is a motif that I do not have yet, the arrows, which I kind of like, and the back side would work nicely for some of the layouts as well, which I kind of like. So this is a contender, and the other one is also from Studio Calico Sundrifter, and it is a bold arrow print. And if you recall, I had a similar arrow print in the last kit I put together, but it was multicolored instead of black and white. And the backside could work with some of the layouts also, not that it matters really, um, but that is also a contender. Right now, this one feels more like something that I want. So I'm gonna go with this one for now. So now that I'm looking at this, the next thing I'm noticing is I want to do another like soft kind of plain pattern maybe like a background sort of pattern. And so I pulled this paper from We Are Memory Keepers and it's an older paper from the chalkboard line. And I am going to include this one for sure. It brings in the yellow, the, the aqua, the pink, um, and it's just a nice, soft, easy, neutral background. So I'm gonna definitely pull that to work with. So you can see that this paper is a little bit more um, graphic and clean than some of the other papers that I've pulled, but I think it can work them together. I love the challenge of pulling different papers together, so I'm going to go ahead and, and still keep that. This was the last paper that I pulled um, to maybe go with this kit. I liked the gray, but it's kind of almost a pinkish toned gray, and I think it looks really nice. Um, my only problem with it is that I have this paper that's also a diagonal stripe. So I think I'm going to nix this paper. What I'm going to do now is go back to that um, canoe paper and see if it's something that I still might want to include. And I'm just going to slide it in. Let's see. I'm going to move these papers around. Sometimes it helps to move your papers around and put different things next to each other to kind of get a real feel for what you have going on. And I don't think I like it. So what I'm gonna do is look for one more paper that maybe has a bit of this yellow in it and that maybe pulls a few more of the colors together. And then, so, so far I have nine papers. I want to include one more. So I'm gonna look for that paper and then I'll come back and show you what I find. Okay, so let me show you what I found and why I decided on what I did. So I found three different papers. One of them is Crate Paper Notes and Things, which I have some crate paper already in here, so I know that that will probably work nicely. 
Um, this is from Lily B Design Sweet Shop. And then this one is from Crate Paper Craft Market. And all three of these have a bit of that yellow in them. Not too much, but a little bit. And I un immediately thought I would choose this one because I really like that it has just a little bit of the other colors running through it. Um, this is a nice neutral. The back is easily usable as well, and I think it could work with any of these kits because it's a neutral as well. But it it feels like a diagonal stripe, and I don't want to get rid of this diagonal stripe, so I'm going to go ahead and nix this one. Um, the second one is this Lily B Design print, and it just feels a little bit too cream for my taste. Even the creams that are in here, or the off-whites, are not super creamy like this one. And so I, I didn't like this one. Plus it had more hearts, and I didn't need more hearts. So what I decided to go with was the Crate Paper Craft Market paper. And I like that it has, it is a polka dot, but it's a large one, and it looks like confetti. And so I think it fits nicely into the color scheme. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that one. And the other thing that I decided on, even though this is a polka dot, and I've, I've been struggling with this polka dot and this, this heart print because they feel very similar, I decided to pull out this paper, which is from Fancy Pants Design. This is from 2011, but it's one of my favorite papers. I've used it before. Um, I have a couple sheets of it. I am going to pull out that farmhouse collection paper and slide in this one. And I feel like that really completes the kit. It really makes it feel um, cohesive. And I just, I really like the way that it looks. So I've got a couple of papers that can work for backgrounds. I've got um, a bolder pattern. And then I've got a cut apart sheet that also has some bold patterns in it. This polka dot is... It's a polka dot, but it's also a bold pattern. I've got these little hearts, which has an ombre fade, and this is a single color. So I've got some multicolored things and some kind of single colored items. I've got some text. This is kind of a text, but since it's so large, I'm not calling it that. And then I've got some more geometric patterns. So I really like the way that this all feels together. I always like to include some sort of specialty paper because I always forget to use it. And so I'm going to throw in this pattern from My Mind's Eye Necessities. And this is a metallic confetti and it's gold, which works great because this has gold on it. And because I took out that other polka dot, I feel like this is a great um, addition. And it also works well with this confetti paper to me. So I'm going to throw that in. And then the other thing I like to do is include two sheets of cardstock. I almost always add white cardstock to my layouts and I can add whatever I want. This is my kit um, and so I don't feel bad adding in things for my stash that weren't originally in the kit if I need to. And so I pulled two sheets of cardstock to match this kit and I may or may not use them. But I pulled this yellow color, which is the same as this yellow color here. And I believe this is a paper from Close to My Heart, but I can't remember exactly where I got it. So um, you'll have to forgive me on that. And I'm not going to stick it right next to this pattern because um, it's not the same yellow as what's on there. So <laughs> just for my visual pleasure. And then this one is from We Are Memory Keepers. And I like these ones because they're two-tone. So the front side and the back side are a little bit different. The back's lighter and I really like it. It matches well. Both sides of it do and I could see me using the lighter side as a background if I if I wanted to. So those are the two patterns or two the, the two cardstocks that I pulled. So these will be my papers for the kit. So now what I'm ready to do is go ahead and start pulling embellishments. So before I start pulling in embellishments I do often like to throw in a six by six paper pad just to use some up. And so I'm gonna throw in this My Mind's Eye cut and paste paper pad, which is a little bit older. I bought it um, and I really liked it at the time, but I've hardly used it because um, I kind of got over the chalkboard trend a little bit. And so it has a lot of black in it. And But I thought a lot of the patterns would match the colors or a, a lot of the colors in this matched the colors in what I pulled and so like I thought this would work nicely with some of these patterns so I'm gonna pull it and see if I can use it and if I don't end up using it a lot that's okay but at least I'll have it there 
to kind of supplement the kit and add in things if I want to or if I can. So I'm going to add that in. Okay, so now for the embellishments. First, what I wanted to choose was an alphabet set. And I usually like to choose a large and a small. So for the large alphabet, I chose these thickers and they are called imprint and they are really pretty. They're black with a gold foil like line in the center of them. I also have a cream version of this, which I might pull if I need it. I wanted to bring something in that had a bit of contrast. So black titles work quite often for me. So I, I knew that would probably work. So, so those black thickers. And I always pull a small alphabet as well. And the small alphabet that I went with was this one, which I cut off of a, um, a larger 12 by 12 sticker sheet, which is from Simple Stories. And so this is, I can't remember which one this is from. Well, it's from Daily Grind. Um, and it's just yellow, so that will work nicely with a bunch of the yellow things that I have going on. And I reserve the right to go to my um, letter stickers and different things if I need to. The kit makes it nice because you can just pull from what you have and make it work, but if you're working at home, you might as well pull what you need if, if what you have isn't working for you. But if I were to pack this up and go to a crop or something, I would just use what I had in the kit. So the next thing I wanted to do was use up some things that I needed to finish up. So this set of thickers is called Celebrate and it's from the Maggie Holmes uh, confetti collection, which these two papers are from. And I've used a bunch of it, but I want to kind of finish it up. So I often like to include packages of things that I need to finish up. So this is one of them. And then the other one I'm going to include is from that same collection and it's the sticker sheet. So I've used a ton of it, but I want to use a little bit more. And this also includes a small tile alphabet, which will be nice to use if I need it. So those two things are a couple of the things I want to get used up and I like this because it has the bright pink in it but it also has kind of that reddish color in it as well so I think it will work nicely to tie everything together same with this one it has the reddish and the pink in it so I, I pulled those two things um, and then I have a few things that I've had for a while and haven't used so I have this sticker sheet from Heidi Swap and they are kind of like enamel stickers and a lot of the colors worked really well with the things that I pulled and I love using these words for titling or for just embellishment and so I pulled that to use and make sure that you can see it all. I'll make sure to include still photos of the entire kit at the end like I did last time. Here's another set of um, stickers that I got. They're chipboard stickers from Studio Calico and these are from the print shop collection, I think. I don't see where it says on it, but it is a little bit older, maybe last year or year before, but I've never used these. I know that the orange probably won't work and neither will this purple, but the, the yellow and this light blue and then all of the text ones I thought would be fun. And I use quite often use hearts as an embellishment. So I pulled that. And then I have these Project Life rub-ons, which are gold, so I wanted to bring in a bit of gold in my embellishment. So I did that with, some of these things have gold on them, but then so do these rub-ons. And they are called, it just says rub-on transfer sheet. I'm trying to find the name for you. I'll link to all available products um, in the description below, as well as over on my blog, so that you can check those out if you want to see any of those. This is from 2014, so it's not very old, um, but I wanted to include that. I have a hard time using rub-ons, and so if I include them in the kit, that, that makes me more likely to use them. Um, this is another sheet that I wanna get used up. It has that kind of reddish orange color in it, as well as some of the yellow and blue and pink, and so I thought maybe I can just finish this off. And these are from Gossamer Blue, and they are puffy stickers, and they are so puffy and pretty, I love them. Um, Another thing that I have that I want to get used up are these Maggie Holmes open book tags. And so they are really cute and I've used some of them, but I have a bunch left still. And so they have that pink in them as well as some gold and some aqua. So I'm throwing those in. And then I am also throwing in these wood pieces from Studio Calico. I don't know what set they're from. I've had them sitting in my wood veneer for quite a while. 
and they're just little words and they're really cute but I haven't used them so I'm just going to throw them in and see what I can get used up from them. So I'm throwing in a lot of things that I've had in my stash for a while and just haven't used but I think they're still cute and as well as things that I want to finish getting used up. So those are the kinds of things I'm using. And then I always do like to include something that's kind of new and exciting to me that I really want to work with. And so um, that would be some of these papers that are a little bit newer. I'm also throwing in this set of enamel dots. I'll pull from my stash if I need to as well. And then I do like to sometimes include a stamp set so that I can um, get those used. I love stamping on my layouts, but I often forget to um, include stamping. So this is from an, a Scraptastic kit. I used to belong to their kit club um, from quite a while back and I love this stamp set. It has um, like a brushy thing, X's, polka dots, pictures plus stories, and then these cute little words that are absolutely adorable. So I'm throwing that in there. And then I did pull a bunch of flare. They're just random little pieces that I thought some of the colors would work. These are a variety of um, American Crafts, Studio Calico, Scraptastic, this one's even from Michael's, um, close to my heart. So there's a variety of flair in there that I will include as well. Hey guys, I just wanted to mention that I am going to add in some washi tape. I like to do that because I have so many rolls of washi tape. So I'm going to use this gold um, glittery washi tape and add that in as well as this roll of tickets. This is from the Crate Paper Notes and Things line. I they are kind of like falling off this roll and it's really bugging me to store them. So I'm going to try to use these up. There are two little rolls here. In fact, I think I'm just going to take them off the roll and stick them in my little box here and then get rid of the roll because that's obnoxious. Actually, I'm going to keep the roll in here and use it for a technique. So watch for that. Anyway, I will be showing you close-up photos of all of the products that I'm going to be using and I hope that you'll play along with me and create your own kit. You can find out more on my blog, like I mentioned, which I will link to below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon.